TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show and as you can see this is the New Year's Eve special. Um, it's gonna be really nice to get out of this time of year so I don't have to be doing three wines for specials. Though maybe I'll do one for Valentine's Day I don't know. Um, but because uh, you know these aren't these were not really like five dollar bottles of wine but they weren't either and they weren't like fifty dollar bottles of wine so wasn't like I was spending huge amounts on it. But anyway, so bubbly. Everybody's doing a wine review on what type of sparkling wine you should drink and all that kind of stuff because it's New Year's Eve. And, uh, or they will be. I haven't really read any yet. But everyone's going to talk about it. And you're going to have people that are going to talk about the usual, you know, you buy Corbel or you buy... You know, White Star, you buy Vouvet Clicquot, you know, the, the, all that kind of stuff. Or you're going to have people that are going to be kind of like me, say, well, maybe you should try a Cava, maybe you should try a Prosecco. But I bet you nobody's really going to talk about the first wine. I remember these are wines, even though we call them sparkling wines. And uh, just real quick, none of these are a champagne. You can't, I mean, now... One is definitely made in the same method as the champagne is made. These two, well, this one definitely is not. This one, I'm not quite sure because I can't get enough information on it, but I'm going to assume that it's not just because it's really labor-intensive and time-consuming and uh, expensive or more expensive than the uh, uh, barrel-fermented or steel tank-fermented versions. All right, so... Let's, uh, let's get right into it. I'm just distracted. That's all. Because um, I'm actually thinking about Monday's episode that uh, I will be doing in, as soon as I'm done with this. All right, so this is the Costa del Mar Brut uh, Sparkling Wine. Uh, this is a non-vintage. All of these are non-vintage. Uh, many sparkling wines you'll find are non-vintage. Uh, this retailed... Oh, I do have it in my notes. <laughs> I thought I'd have to run upstairs and get and get the hoopty nugget. All right, so um, anyway, so twelve dollars and thirty four cents. Got it at Specs. That is the five percent discounted price for paying, or is it ten percent? Ten percent of Specs, five percent at Gabriel's. Right. Anyway, whatever. It was uh, the it was the discounted price for paying with cash, debit, or check. Didn't, I never heard him say check, but I did see someone writing a check yesterday. I was like, really? People still write checks? Anyway, um, so I'll tell you a little bit about this. Um, Non-vintage. This is uh, from the Mendoza region of Argentina, though uh, the Patagonia region apparently does a lot of sparkling wines. Uh, this is predominantly Chardonnay. And there's also what the website that I found that actually had information, which was HoustonWines.com, I think it was. Um, Pinot de la Loire, which is also known as Chenin Blanc. So kind of interesting, a little Chenin Blanc action in some sparkling wine. So how many of you had an Argentinian, or Argentine, Argentinian sparkling wine before today? Yeah, I didn't raise my hand either. <laughs> okay, so I don't get the typical... I'm really not getting the typical bread or bakery type smell you get from sparkling wines or champagnes, really more, more specifically from champagnes. I'm getting a little bit of tartness from it. Um, got some decent bubble action still. I'm getting kind of some melon, melon uh, aromas out of it. Almost rind, almost kind of like the cantaloupe rind. 
different. So let's uh, let's see how it tastes. It's, it's a brute, which in Argentinian terms is extra dry. Um, so it's dry. There's, there's a hint of some sweetness to it. Um, I, I don't think it's any better than J. Roger, which is for my um, restaurant buddies that work at places that have uh, champagne toast. That's our joking. Well, that's a kind of our little inside joke because that's the champagne of choice, J. Roger, because it's like two dollars a bottle or whatever. You know, it's, it's cheap. It's like five, four or five dollars a bottle. Um, so real cheap stuff. And I saw cases of it at Specs, and I was like, uh, go away. It's basic. It'll get the job done at, I think it's like actually $14. $13 or $14 normal retail there. Um, I would say I wouldn't buy it. Um, if this was like maybe an $8 bottle, I'd probably say... Go ahead and you know go ahead and spend the money on it. You know those those six, seven, eight dollar bottles of sparkling wine. I'd say you probably go ahead and set it. But for me, for what I, you know, for what I kind of want out of a sparkling wine, um, not so much. Rating, I don't know. I mean, it does what it's supposed to do. And I, I really don't want to give it a bad score. I want to give it really some more. I want to give it like another chance here. I mean, it improved a little bit because I was getting a little more out of the bottle, but seventy-eight. My first thought was seventy-five, but I was trying to be a little bit nice because the second the second swig was a little bit better. Seventy-eight. I'd say don't buy it. All right, so let's uh, go on to the next one. All right, so this pull up the notes for it. This is the uh, La Marca Prosecco, um, also non-vintage, sparkling wine. Uh, get a little close-up of that. And uh, this is out of the uh, Veneto region. Um, it's actually a place, the, the winery is actually located in a place called Arderzo. Um, and they use the Prosecco grape. So Prosecco is not just, you know, a, a, a fancy Italian word for sparkling wine or champagne or anything like that is actually the varietal that's used. However, um, from this region. However, uh, you can find sparkling wines in Italy that are made with other varietals, just so you know. So lots of bubbles, at least on the head, but as far as bubbles in the glass, not so much. Now these have been open for a little over an hour and while you would think that you can't do that with champagnes, you can. Um, but as far as the sparkles, not so much. Not so much on this one. So let's see how it is. I uh, got it for $14.81 at Specs. Again, that's the discounted cash price. And I uh, really can't find too much else. I mean, there's a website for them, but they don't really have much information. And this particular wine on the website doesn't even exist. They, they looks like they have some higher-end uh, sparkling wines, um, but this particular one looks like it's their entry level. And I will say that I did buy this partially because it got a good uh, score, and I can't remember who did it. Uh, it might have been Wine Spectator. I'll tell you what their score was after I taste it. 
Now there's definitely um, some fruitiness to this. I think I have a little too much in here. There we go. A little bit of fruitiness to it. Um, again, no, not, not really any pastry bread action. A little bit of sugar, which I'm kind of, no, it doesn't say anything about how dry it's supposed to be, so. But really not much. So let's see how it tastes. one give it a second shot in the glass because I'm not really getting much out of it I find it's pretty basic also but it's got a little bit of sweetness so I think it would appeal a little more sweet so I think it would appeal to a lot of people do melon type of feel from it. Um, I haven't had a honeydew in a long time, but those are like my favorite melons. But it's like just a hint. Uh, it's got a look, it's got more sweet, it's more sweet than than this one. Probably should keep that on camera. Um, a little sweeter than that one, uh, than the uh, uh, Costa del Mar, but if I remember the score right, it was like a 90 or a 91, not for my palate. I'm going to say it's, be it's definitely better than this one, I, uh, there's, there's a little bit more going on with it, uh, and yes, these are chilled, they were, they were chilled for about an hour and a half in the fridge, and they've been out for a little over an hour, so they're still, they're still cool, they're not ice cold, but... Um, 82 for 15 bucks nah I've had some other Proseccos that I enjoyed better but then again the the environment was a little different you know the whole your your environment sometimes influences how well you like something um, but I've also had like some Proseccos from other like I've, I've I've gone out to restaurants by myself so it's not like you're with a bunch of people and you're having some some grandiose um, uh, celebration or anything like that um, that influences you. And I've had some other Proseccos that I thought were a little bit better than that one. Okay, so now let's go to this one. This is the Segura Viudas Brut Reserva Cava. This is from Spain. Um, Non-vintage again. Let's get the notes. Uh, I think this was actually the cheapest of the three. Seven dollars and ninety-five cents. Uh, like I said, it's cava. Um, now this is actually made in the quote um, uh, traditional method. Uh, now what they'll say is method champagne or champagne champ, champ, champenois. I think it's actually pronounced not yay. Champenois because they can't say champagne method. Um, so this is. Uh, is fermented, then the second fermentation is done in the bottle. This is a uh, mixture, a blend of 50% Macabio, 35% Parayada, uh, and 15% Charella. Um, aged for three years in the bottle. So, um, and it's from the Penendez, from Penendez, Spain, it's Catalonia area, it's kind of the upper northwest part of uh, Spain. On the Mediterranean. So let's check it out. Get a little more in there. So again, I don't get. I 
don't get the whole bread thing that you do get from champagne. I kind of miss that because I really like that bread yeasty stuff, you know, that smell. But the nose is very pleasant. I get maybe I get a little hint of excuse me, of bakery action. Salt the bubbles. Some fruits. Um, what am I getting out of that? More of a tropical fruit uh, nose. I'll be honest, in, right now it kind of smells like that uh, Rene Barbier Mediterranean White that we drink a lot. Which is also from this exact same area of Spain. Maybe not exact, but it's still from the same area of Spain, from Catalonia. Maybe some peaches. This is, I'm already liking this better. Yeah, maybe a little bit of peach action. So let's see how it tastes. points were good. I mean, I'd say that this was rated 90 points. Okay, just now I'm getting kind of that. I got a little bit of that, that, that bread, almost stinky bread. Now it's gone. But anyway, so let's, let's try it again. This is definitely the best of the three, and the funny part is the cheapest of the three. See how that works out sometimes? Price isn't always an indicator of quality, or at least how you're going to like it. Um, I kind of get the peaches still. Really, a lot of this is the mouth feel I'm getting. Um, it's definitely a dry wine. It's not as, it's kind of... It's kind of in between these two as far as dryness. This has, this is dry, well, actually I think it's drier than this one. But it, you know, you don't feel like your mouth is like bone dry. Because this has, well, no, it's in between. This had a little bit of sweetness. This has kind of a moderate amount of sweetness. And this is a little bit sweeter. Okay, so give you a perspective of that. Um, I think most people would really like this. Because um, it has that, it's not as sweet as this one though. This is really not a sweet Prosecco by any means, but I think I think the sweetness level on this is kind of that just right between dry and sweet. It's got a good mouthfeel to it. Um, you do get a little bit of that fruit. Get a little bit of that fruitness, uh, fruitiness. By the way, Rene Barbier does make a sparkling wine, and I saw it elsewhere after I'd already bought these three, and I've seen it out, and. I thought about buying it and I didn't because I already had bought these three. I didn't want to do four wines. All right, so as the music is indicated, it's time to wrap things up. Uh, score, I give this uh, 85. I think it's decent, decent wine. If you can find this, which you should be able to, uh, this is I think this is their lower end. Well, it is because they have an Aria one that's a little bit pricier. Um, Buy this one for $7.95. That was, the, again, the discounted price. So you can probably find it for between $8 and $9. Um, definitely something that I would, if you're going to go to somebody's house and you're going to bring some uh, sparkling wine and you don't want to do the traditional champagne stuff, I would say buy these. This one. These two, not really. Um, I mean, we'll drink them, I'm sure. Probably drink some of this tonight, even though it's Wednesday, because uh, I will be at the, quote, day job on New Year's Eve night. Uh, making sure people are being safe. And with that said, I hope all of you have a safe and uh, wonderful New Year's Eve. Um, well, this is one of those times of year that people love to go out and get hammered. Um, and, and I've had my share of nights that I've, you know, had quite a bit. Uh, 
this is one of those nights that you really do need to be safe out there. Um, Chicago is a great city. Uh, with the CTA, it's usually penny night on CTA after a certain time all the way through like 5 or 6 in the morning. So, I mean, I had like the all-you-can-ride car, so it didn't really matter for me. But if you were somebody that didn't take CTA very often with that public transportation, one penny will got you on so you can be safe. You didn't have to drive anywhere. I highly encourage everybody to have at least a designated driver or at least have plans to take a cab or maybe you got the, maybe you got the bones to, to rent a limo for the night or have a car service. So, um, uh, and just remember for those of, for those of us, uh, that are, that are in the industry, uh, this is amateur night. So, uh, you have a lot of people out there that are not used to having more than maybe a couple drinks. So they don't know what their limits are and they don't, and besides the whole blood alcohol content, they don't know how much they can handle. So be safe out there. If this is one of those nights you don't go out very often, don't, don't be drinking two bottles of champagne because in the morning you're going to feel horrible. Uh, if you did get behind the wheel of the car, you probably didn't make it home, uh, at least not home. You may have spent the night in the jail cell or spent the weekend in the jail cell, and hopefully you didn't do anything more than that. Um, that's it. We'll see everybody again on Monday for the first episode of the 2010 year. And, um, yeah, that wine, I'm really hoping, uh, turns out, Excellent. I uh, would love for it to be the highest rated wine in, in history of, of this program, but we'll see how it is. And that's about all I'm going to tell you. Have a great New Year.